modern railroads have evolved into one of the most dependable and surest forms of mass transportation of the 20th century. Modern technology and precision engineering make the railroads a vast network that operates thousands of trains daily over 375,000 miles of track. It was only a little over 150 years ago that the inventors of the iron horse proved the necessity of a railroad system in a growing nation. Once convinced, the capitalists issued mortgage bonds and capital stock to finance the project. The race was on, clearing land and laying tracks that would link city to city. The railroads crisscrossed the nation and greatly encouraged westward expansion by increasing land values. By 1853, it was possible for the first time to travel by rail from Chicago to New York. On May 10, 1869, the Union Pacific and Central Pacific joined at Promontory Point and completed the first transcontinental route. In 1869, Commodore Vanderbilt began the construction of his Grand Central Terminal in New York City. Completed in 1871, Grand Central stood as one of the greatest American train terminals of the 19th century and the gateway to a continent. Travel by rail became the most glorious way to go anywhere, and soon it was necessary for the railroad to build an additional train shed to accommodate the growing traffic. By 1898, the terminal was enlarged to accommodate the 60,000 daily passengers. But from 280 trains daily in 1894 to 505 by the turn of the century, the old terminal fell victim to the congestion and smoke. By 1903, under the supervision of William H. Vanderbilt, then chairman of the New York Central, the work began constructing the present Grand Central Terminal. The project, that took almost a decade to complete, at a cost of about $65 million, featured a new double-decked underground system and a terminal that would become an architectural landmark of New York City. Today, Grand Central Terminal was dwarfed by the huge skyscrapers that surround it. The 42nd Street facade features the huge figures of Mercury flanked by Hercules and Minerva. The clock is 13 feet in diameter. In total, the group weighs 1,500 tons. Tarnished by pollution and old age, the terminal stands as a monument to engineering genius and architectural ingenuity. Each day, thousands of commuters still ride the trains that arrive and depart from Grand Central. Modern railroads make 95% of their profits from freight service. A freight train is capable of transporting practically anything that must be shipped. Livestock, lumber, oil or steel can be shipped together in one train. It's common that a freight train be a mile in length and consists of 100 individual cars. These trains are bound for local yards. A yard consists of a series of parallel tracks off of the siding where the individual cars are stored and classified. It is here that the cars are arranged in the proper order depending on their final destination. A small engine called a switcher does the actual work of rearranging and making up the train. The shanty that stands next to the tracks houses the men and office equipment. Inside the shanty, man and computer work together and are responsible for setting each piece of freight on its proper route. The computers can instantly send and receive all the necessary information regarding the makeup of the train to and from other yards. For each car in the yard, there is one computer card made. The card tells the content, destination, specification, and number of the car. 
The cards are then sorted and placed in their proper cubby hole, each space representing the track that the car will be moved to for proper routing. Once all necessary information is received, it is up to the men that work in the yard to physically disassemble and rearrange the order of the cars. Some cars may remain in the yard, while others may join up with other freight trains. Coming from all parts of the country, this train is carrying lumber, auto parts, and petroleum products. All the cars that will go to the Chevrolet plant are moved to one track. The rest are moved to other tracks, depending on where their final destination point is. Once all the cars in the yard have been moved to the proper track, they will then be transported to the local factories and final destination points to be unloaded. Throughout the course of the day, a modern railroad system may operate as many as 400 trains daily over the same four tracks. Each train must remain a certain distance away from the preceding train to prevent collision. For this reason, it is imperative that the exact location of each train be known at all times. The tracks are set up in blocks. Each block is separated by signals. The signals are suspended on steel structures called signal bridges. When a train passes through a green signal, the signal will automatically turn to red to prevent the next train from catching up and causing a rear-end collision. Along the tracks, there are towers that monitor all the trains in that area. Inside M.O. Tower, there is a board with a diagram of the tracks. When a train approaches the area, its exact location is instantly seen as a small red light which appears on the board. In front of the board, there is a row of colored handles called levers. Black levers control switches. Red levers control signals. At any given time, switches and signals may be instantly changed to accommodate an approaching train. The men that operate the tower never have to actually see the train in order to set it on the proper tracks. Placing this northbound Hudson train on its proper route is a typical daily operation of the tower.
The safety and efficiency of a modern railroad largely depends upon the maintenance of the equipment and service. The Harmon Diesel and Electric Shops is in operation around the clock, servicing and maintaining equipment. At this point in the route, the diesels of all long distance trains are removed and replaced by engines that operate off the third rail. Diesel is then sent to a fuel station where an attendant refills the tank. The diesel gets washed by an automatic wash rack. Um, um, um. After washing, the diesel is routed to the shop for inspection and repair. Inside the shop, repair parts can be made from scratch. All the heavy work of rebuilding and repairing is done on these premises. Repairing a bent cow catcher on the bottom of this bud car or rebuilding a diesel engine is commonplace. The disassembly of this M2 brake valve requires the knowledge of an experienced, skilled mechanic who completely understands the working principles of the valve in the braking system. By late afternoon, the VN4 arrives at the West Yard. Before continuing south, the train must once again drop off the cars which are scheduled to arrive at the yard. Once the cars are dropped, the diesels are switched back to couple up with the original train and continue the journey south. From the beginning, 
the railroads have played a major role in the development and expansion of America. But with the coming of other forms of mass transportation, the railroads have been in constant decline, leaving miles of track abandoned. As pollution closes in on us more and more each day, the railroad may once again find its place as leader of the transportation industry.